Hi everyone. Welcome to the Board of Governors of 2020. I'm very glad for the opportunity to host you here in my lab. My name is Ido Kaminer. I'm an assistant professor in the Faculty of Electrical Engineering. And we are now inside the microscopy center of the Technion, we call the MICA. Uh, it is inside the Faculty of Materials, Science and Engineering. And uh, what I'm going to show you now is the lab that we built here recently that is combining the electron microscopes uh, with a strong lasers, both high power and short uh, duration. And this is also why we have those double doors here for eye safety and for the quality of experiments in the lab. So we'll go inside. You can see some of what is making us really excited about this lab and what we can do with it. Um, so what you see at the center of this lab is the electron microscope itself. This is what we call a transmission electron microscope or a TEM. Um, and this TEM is bringing down electrons to allow us to image samples, take photos of samples at very, very high resolution. And the lab is really designed around it to support it in terms of the quality and stability of what we do inside. For example, we're sitting right on the rock of the Carmel Mountain, and also in other parameters, like uh, the air conditioning system here that has to be extremely high, uh, extremely stable in its uh, temperature and also humidity. Now, the core of the system and what makes it really run is, in our case, a laser that is starting the entire process. This is really the key to everything here. This is a femtosecond laser, those are super short pulses of laser light that is starting the light emission and then by converting it in different ways sending the light around the microscope and eventually into it to start the process to excite the electrons uh, the most important part here is that we convert the laser light into ultraviolet ultraviolet or uv is also the range of frequencies that allow us today to kill viruses and is really important in the era of corona uh, it's actually part of the research of my group to develop and invent new methods to create radiation and light sources in different regimes of the electromagnetic spectrum, UV being one of them. Here we use it to send it around the microscope and through a lot of complicated optics to couple it and then guide it through these optics. So we have two pulses eventually, the original laser pulse that is sent through uh, the microscope here and then the UV pulse that is sent through here. It's sent through a mirror into the top of the sample, excites an electron inside from a tip. This electron is accelerated down the column, that reaching to about 70% the speed of light. And then they both meet the electron pulse and then the other light pulse in the sample area. Then we can put different samples inside from photonic structures to two-dimensional materials and a lot of other quantum materials that we are looking into and studying their properties and then collecting the information about it by looking at the electrons down at the bottom of the column where we can collect a lot of information about electrons for example see tiny changes um, like in the absorption or, or emission of a single quantum of light single photon by that electron and that allows us a lot of the discoveries that are happening here these days for example the paper that appeared a few weeks ago in nature was the first time that we were able to see how light flows on very small materials. Uh, we can actually capture uh, light flow on a photonic crystal. Those are the same kind of materials that are used in other forms to improve the screens of our cell phones. Um, and when we uh, understand better how light flows inside them, we can really design them to be better. And we have also combined different kinds of materials into them to improve their quality and the way they operate. And really what we saw here is for the first time how light flows inside such a material, being able to image it at extremely high resolution in space and also with very good resolution in time to see the dynamics of light in such a material. That's what got it into nature. Um, generally building this and combining the pieces, the automation, the software, and a lot of complicated science from electron physics to light, science of light, is, it's only possible because of first a lot of hard work by the great guys in my team from students, postdocs, and also the lab engineer, Rafael Dehan, who is really the father of this system. Um, and also, what made it possible for us to start here is the support of the Technion administration, friends from abroad, the Magid family that supported this financially and made it possible. And for us, Technion is really a, an accelerator. I came to, with this idea, built it originally before I came back from MIT. And the fact that Technion supported this 
with the ability to put funds into it, the space, the area, the expertise of different people is really what made this possible. So for me, this is an accelerator for a, a scientific startup that is now leading to a lot of beautiful science and we're doing more of it these days and I think we'll see more exciting results. This is a lot of fun for guys in my group. Uh, I hope to be able to also host you here uh, physically in the lab after Corona ends and I'm glad for the opportunity to take you for this tour. Thanks.